Goeiemorgen, broers en sisters. Voor mij is het opnieuw te groot voorrecht om vanochtend die woord met u te deel. Ons thema vanochtend is Hope in Isolation. En ons lees uit 1 Konings 17 in enkele versie uit hoofdstuk 18. Dank u voor allemaal wie so getrouw voorbereiding doen voor vooral my bediening, maar ook al die andere gemeentes in het. Daar zonder kan ik beslis nie. En dan veel geluk ook aan elke wie verjaar het, huwelijksherdenkings gevier het, of dalk mylpale bereik het. Romeine hoofdstuk 8 vers 37 sê, Maar in al hierdie dinge is ons meer as oorwinnaars, dier hom wat vir ons lief het. Ons begin ons diens, Na aanleiding van Romeine hoofdstuk 8 vers 35 tot 39 Wie kan ons van die liefde van Christus sky leiding of benauwdheid of vervolging, honger of naaktheid, gevaar of zwaard daar staan immers geskrywe dit is voor u dat die dood ons dag voor dag bedreig dat ons so slagskape behandel word maar in al hierdie dinge is ons meer as oor winnaars dier hom wat vir ons lief het. Hiervan is ek oortuig geen dood of lewe of engele of machte of teenswoordige of toekomstige dinge of krachte of hoogte of diepte of enig iets anders in die skepping kan ons van die liefde van God sky nie. Die liefde wat daar is in Christus Jezus ons Heere. Geliefdes, Genade vir u en vrede van God ons Vader en Christus Jezus ons Heere, dier die krachtvolle werking van de Heilige Gees. Amen. Kom ons neem nou die tijd vir voorbidding en danksegging, terwijl ons die geleentheid kry om een kersie aan te steek vir een of ander behoefte. Ons skriflesing vind ons uit 1 Konings hoofstuk 17 vers 1 tot 4 vers 23 en 24 en dan ook hoofstuk 18 vers 1. Kom ons lees saam. Elia die tisbiet was een bijwoner uit Gilead. Hy het vir Agap gesê, so seker as die Heere leef, die God van Israel in diens ek staan, daar sal die volgende jaar geen dou of reen val nie, behalwe as ek so sê. Die woord van die Heere het tot Elia gekom en gesê, gaan hier vandaan af oeswaarts en gaan versteek jou en krit spruit, ander kant die Jordaan. Je kan water in die spruit drink en ik je die kraaie beveel om daar voor jou te zorg. Dan vers 12. Toe sê sy, dit is die wede weer. So seker as die Heere die God leef, ek het nie meer brood nie. Net een handvol meel in die kruik en een bykie olie in die erde kan. Ik maak maar nou een paar houtjes bij mekaar en ga dan voor mij en mijn sienkie iets klaarmaak om te eet. Daarna moet ons maar doodgaan. Elias sê te vir haar, moet nie bekommerd wees nie. Gaan maak het klaar, net soos jy gesê het, maar maak eerst voor mij een roosterkoek en bring het hier. Daarna kan jij voor jou en jou sienkie zorg. So sê die Heere, die God van Israel, die meel in die kruip, kruik sal nie opraak nie, en die olie in die kan sal nie minder word nie, totdat die Heere laat reen het op die land. Dan van vers 23, Toe bring Elia die kind van die boerkamer af, Ondertoe en geef vir hom, hom vir sy ma en sê, Kijk, jou sienkie leef. Die vrou sê toe vir Elia, Nou weet ek, 
dat u een man van God is en wat en dat die Heere en dat wat die Heere der u sê die waarheid is. En dan hoofstuk 18 vers 1 Na lang tijd, dit was om trein drie jaar, het die woord van die Heere tot die Lea gekom en gesê ga na Agap toe en nie langer vir hom wegkruip nie ek wil het weer in die land laat reen. Tot so ver. Kom ons bid nou eers weer saam. Liewe Heer, laat dan nou die woorde van my mond en die oordenking van my hart vir u wel behagelijk wees. Amen. Wow, what a difficult week for me. <coughs> On Sunday, just after the nice Father's Day lunch served by Marilyn, one of the deacons phoned with the news of two of the leadership of the congregation that tested positive for the virus. One of them was in hospital. On Wednesday, a dear friend of 82 years old, more like a father to me, passed away in his sleep. Not COVID related, though it was quite a shock. In Bersig, Reverend Ferreira, my colleague, held our first COVID related funeral. Another fa family in the congregation reported isolation and another member was hospitalized. Several families asked for prayer for their loved ones in hospital or in isolation. So it was quite difficult. On top of it, one of my own family members tested positive and their family is now in isolation. Oh, it made me think a lot about isolation this week. How are we to react to the kind of self-isolation that we are called to practice in the current coronavirus pandemic? I wondered how the Bible can help families that have to self-isolate. You know, we find an interesting story of how Elijah landed in isolation in the first book of Kings. Israel, in the days of Elijah, was not presented with a challenge such as the coronavirus outbreak. Its challenge was rather oppression by a ruling dynasty with a particular ideological outlook. The kingdom was ruled by Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Their policy was to lead the people from worshipping the living God to worship the false god, Baal. Instead of worshipping God, people were offering their own children to Baal. Ayab and Jezebel ruled with fear and terror and were not tolerating any opposition. In the face of this situation, Elijah speaks of, jo of God's judgment upon Ahab's rule, announcing that a serious drought will befall the country. And that message certainly wasn't taken kindly. As a result of that action, God commands Elijah to withdraw from life in Israel. Hide yourself by the Wadi Kerith, or the valley or the ravine Kerith, which is east of the Jordan. The Lord continues to uh, and, and saying that you shall drink from the brook and I ha that and I have commanded the ravens to feed you thee. It could be said that Elijah isolates himself in order to save his life. However, this was a period not so much of loneliness and fear for him but of solitude, a time to grow closer to God, to deepen his relationship with God, to learn how to depend fully on God, to discover again that the God who is in control is the God who always will provide, even if it means sending ravens with food. Solitude indeed is a time to grow stronger. 
The second lesson when facing a time of isolation is learning to find the courage to fight back. After a period at the Wadi Karith, Elijah is commanded by God to, to move again, this time to Zarephath. The terrible drought that Elijah prophesied to Ahab was devastating livelihoods. Once more, he is commanded to remain in isolation, but this time not alone, but as part of a household. He will stay with a widow and a son. When Elijah meets her, the widow is without hope and overwhelmed by the situation in which she finds herself. Listen to what she is saying in verse 12. I don't have bread. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son so that we may eat it and die. Utter despair. No hope whatsoever. Elijah calls her out of her despair, inviting her to live instead with courage. Don't be afraid. He says, in other words, you must fight the despair. Do not be afraid. Do not accept defeat. But how? Interestingly, by looking away from your own interest and act in solidarity and generosity towards others. Elijah says, first make a small bread for me. And then you can look after yourself and your son. And yeah, trust in the Lord. You see, friends, acts of solidarity and generosity always conquer fear and despair because of the faith needed to do so. Then, of course, the miracle took place. The flour and the oil did not finish. Through holding on to these principles of fighting despair by acts of solidarity and generosity while trusting the Lord, Elijah, the widow, and the son are sustained through the, day the days in which they are to live in isolation in the same household. Now, it would be nice to report that Elijah, the widow, and the son lived happily ever after. But the time together is marked by crisis and concern. The widow's son falls ill and shows all the signs of death. In ancient times, these, this, such a tragedy would not only be about the loss of a boy, it would also pitch this widow mother, widowed mother into the most extreme vulnerability and likelihood of death too. Elijah, the widow and his son must make their way through this time as a household. They don't seem to have anyone else around to call for help. The widow responds to her son's seeming death in a number of ways, including criticism of Elijah. What have you against me, man of God? In other words, you are to blame. She reacts with self-reproach and grief. Maybe it is because of my sins. Elijah responds by, responded by crying out to God for the child's life. And wow, wonderfully, the boy's life was restored. Such restoration stands in utter contrast to the report of the children's death mentioned at the beginning of Elijah's story. It enables the widow to acknowledge that it is the living God that truth is to be found. But friends, Elijah's lockdown and isolation does not go on forever. After a long time, God recalls Elijah back to life with others 
and tells him to return to Ahab and his court. Life from now on is going to be different. Yes, there's going to be a new normal now. Elijah emerged from isolation a changed man, ready to challenge Ahab for the truth and for the way that Israel should live. Who will Israel follow? Baal or the Lord? But friends, maybe we should look at our time of isolation and quarantine not as a time of loneliness, despair or fear, but as a time of solitude, an opportunity of growing closer to God. Let us allow God to fill our hearts with the courage to fight the despair by acts of solidarity and generosity. While we fully rely on the Lord, let us learn to live with the challenges that COVID-19 brings. Let us affirm that God is a God of life, life abundantly and life eternal. Let us emerge from isolation as changed human beings, stronger, more resilient, our faith recharged ready to face new challenges, proclaiming the dominion of God in every area of life and unmasking the false gods. Amen. Before we end our service this morning with prayer, you are invited to share your thoughts in the comment section below. In order to continue this discussion, we will be providing two resources to the congregations via WhatsApp, a short Bible study on this sermon, and our first podcast in the series, Testimonies of Hope, where one of the family share their faith journey during isolation. If you are not on our WhatsApp groups and would like to have these resources, please leave your email address or WhatsApp number in the comment section below. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to change the way we look at these tough times. Help us to see the opportunities to draw near to you and grow in our faith. Help us to fight despair by lending a hand to others around us. Help us to live with the challenges of COVID-19. Yes, Lord, help us to emerge stronger, ready to proclaim your kingdom. And now we can pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.